Hey guys, there's this amazing verse in Philippians 4 verse 6 to 7 that says this, do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It's a great scripture, especially at the moment when people are anxious, anxious for the health of loved ones, anxious about their jobs, anxious about their business, anxious for their kids. There's a lot of anxiety and concern right now and with good reason. And this verse is amazing because in it, Paul tells us what to do when we're anxious and he tells us how God responds with his peace. But today I want to show you something else about this verse. It is sandwiched in two, between two other verses that help make everything else possible. Verse four says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. And verse 8 says, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And you might be thinking, well, that's all very well for Paul to tell us to rejoice at all times, but he isn't living on planet Earth in 2020. I mean, we started the year with fires, we moved on to floods, and now coronavirus and economic instability, and I have to have my kids home every single day, and it's only March. Paul does not understand what we're facing right now. Maybe he does understand. You see, Paul wrote those words from a prison cell. Before being thrown into prison, Paul was beaten with wooden rods. The prison he was thrown into would better be described as a dungeon. He was put into stocks, unable to move. It was overcrowded, no toilets, think about that for a second, little food, and in complete darkness. So he wasn't facing what we're facing today, but he had a few concerns of his own. And yet he writes these words, rejoice and be anxious for nothing. Here's what I wonder. What if the key to being anxious for nothing is in learning to rejoice in every situation? What if when he get, tells us to rejoice, Paul is actually giving us a formula? Now, if your brain's anything like my brain, it's immediately arguing back. How can I rejoice? So much is going wrong. Well, Paul's given us the key to that as well in verse 8. It's like he's saying, hey, this is how you do it, guys. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about this. He's saying, rack your brain and think of whatever fits the bill. Anything that is good, anything that is praiseworthy, think on that and then you'll rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, regardless of the concerns that weigh you down. Consciously think of anything that you can rejoice about. The Greek word for rejoice is Cairo, and it means rejoice exceedingly, be glad, be well, be cheerful, be calmly happy, and thrive. I love that it says thrive. This reminds me that even in the midst of uncertainty, even in the midst of the unknown, even in the hard times, we can thrive. And Paul tells us how. In fact, it was from this prison cell that Paul and his mate Silas were singing praises to God in the stench, in the darkness, in the pain, in the stocks. They sang praises to God and God broke their chains and opened up the prison, resulting in their prison guard encountering God's love and forgiveness. Let's rejoice. Think on whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, anything that's excellent and rejoice in it. Thank God for it. And when the rest of the world is shaken and afraid, you and your family will thrive and others will encounter Jesus as a result. See you tomorrow.